Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is Mu'iz Bukhari, recording for the Daily Reminder Network. This is a continuation of the previous episode where we spoke about the sunan and etiquettes in regard to dua. It is of utmost importance that we supplicate unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with firm conviction and belief that He will answer if we wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should answer our du'as. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, and the narration goes along the lines of these words, Call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you are certain of a response. Call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are certain of a response from Allah azza wa jal. And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not answer the dua that stems from a negligent and heedless heart. This particular narration has been recorded in the book of Imam At-Tirmidhi rahimahullah. The first etiquette that I would like to touch on in today's episode is that the individual who wishes that his dua should be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should make sure that his clothing and food are pure and halal. Because the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have quoted an example of a traveler who travels a long distance and is now disheveled and unkempt. He raises his hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rab, Ya Rab, he cries out, Oh Allah, O oh Allah, whilst Matu'amuhu haram, mashrabuhu haram, malbasuhu haram, wa ghudhiya bil haram. Whilst his food is haram, his drink is haram, his clothing is haram, he has been basically nourished by haram. فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهَا How can he be responded? In other words, how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respond to such an individual? So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we have to make sure that our sources of income are halal and pure, that our food that we consume are halal and pure, the clothing that we wear are halal and pure, if we wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should answer our du'as. The next etiquette in line is that it is mustahab, it is preferable to face the qibla when making du'a. And it is from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to raise your hands when making du'a. A narration has been recorded in the book of Imam Abu Dawud rahimahullah where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said and the narration goes along the lines of these words. Your Lord is kind and generous and he is too kind that when a slave of his raises his hands to him to turn back those hands empty. Allahu Akbar. Look at what a kind and generous maker we are subject to my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. So our hands should be in such a way that our palms face towards the heavens and we should beg like beggars from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should beg in humility from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another narration which has also been recorded in the book of Imam Abu Dawood, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the narration goes along the lines of these words, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using or in other words with your palms facing upwards and not with the back of your hands. We're not supposed to make dua like this but rather like this. The next etiquette in line is to never give up supplicating unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even though you don't see or feel a response. You have to keep on beseeching and supplicating unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with humility. You need to keep knocking at the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you wish to achieve a response from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must never give up. We must keep supplicating unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is of utmost importance that we remember to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during times of ease, that we do not forget supplicating unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during times of ease. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during times of ease and he azza wa jal will remember you during times of hardship. Now let's focus on something that will help to bring a swift response to our supplications and that is to seek out the best timings and the best places to make dua. And this is derived from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. In terms of places, masajid in general and masjid al-haram in Mecca in particular if you want your dua to be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In terms of special timings, 
and this is once again derived from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We must strive to supplicate unto Allah subhanahu wa taala during these special and amazing timings. Number one is just before Fajr, just before dawn. Number two, during the last third of the night. Number three, when it's raining. Don't miss this opportunity. When it is raining, according to the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, our du'as stand a chance to be answered by Allah subhanahu wa taala. As the beautiful raindrops fall, supplicate unto Allah subhanahu wa taala. Between the adhan and the iqama, the time between the tiny time frame between the adhan and the iqama is also a special timing. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers our du'as. And the final timing, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is known as Sa'atul Istijaba. And this is a special timing only on Fridays. And there is a difference of opinion as to when this timing falls, whether it's in the morning, some scholars state that it is the time from, uh, in other words, it is the time frame from the time the Imam, the Khatib, stands up on the pulpit until he concludes with the prayer and other scholars rahimahumullah state this is after asr the final hour of asr and this particular the last opinion is the more favorable opinion according to the majority of the scholars uh, rahimahumullah that it is the last hour of the evening on friday but how many of us on Fridays, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we are involved in so many other things. How many of us, after Salatul Asr, raise our hands up to our Maker? How many of us pray? Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanan wa fi al-akhirati hasanan wa qina How many of us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with the best in this world? as well as the hereafter, and to protect us from the blazing inferno of Jahannam. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, make use of these special timings to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal states in the Noble Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانَ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي When my slaves ask of me, ask you of me فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ Inform them. Allah Azza wa Jal answers I am close to them. Allahu Akbar. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانَ I answer, I respond to the caller when he calls. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us follow these beautiful etiquettes taught to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if we wish that our du'as be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please share this video around as much as possible to inspire an amazing sunnah revival and so that we help others too to perfect their du'as to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the best in this world as well as the hereafter and unite all of us in the gardens of Jannah with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen wa akhir da'wai and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.